yes my dear friend welcome back to the channel this is salon's blog well 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 it is a beautiful monday here in southeast asia it is in the evening i trust i know you are doing great wherever you are across the globe you are highly welcome yes this is just to give you a quick update <clears throat> quick update from around the football world from england to italy <laughs> to france and wherever even afcon if we have it we shall deliver to you Stay glued because right now it's about to get get kicking. Yes, Chelsea. We are on a break. One whole week, our players are going to be on a break for a whole week. They should be returning around 20th and start preparing for the game against Middlesbrough. Second game against Middlesbrough with, in the space of two weeks. Yeah, and so they are now on break and they should be back to training by 20th. The game is going to be on 24th. But then, a lot is happening around the club, Chelsea. And in fact, even our, one of our own, John Obi Mikel, has been speaking about the happenings around the club. Some of the things that he's been saying are very true. But I know many of you out there are not happy. Many comments I've been reading from his uh, podcast, he said that many people are trying to judge him wrongly. Even though he tried to let the facts bear, the truth is what he's trying to put across. How things used to be in the club and how it is now. If you observe, he doesn't just interview anyone, anyone, anyhow. He only interviews people inside there that were in the club with him. In those days, players who know the club in and out, who can stand and speak exactly how things were being run in, the, in those days. It's true, things have changed. But the DNA of the club must still be there. That is what they call some clubs, traditional clubs. There is a tradition in every club. And so whether you are a new player, you are born today, so long as you sign for that club, you have to obey the traditions of that club. John Obi Mikel, he is an ex-player of Chelsea. For me, he is one of my legends in Chelsea. I respect him so much and I will respect his words. For those of you who have been saying he's talking too much, he's in the podcast to talk too much, I beg you, come again. Do you know what it takes to play for Chelsea for eight years, nine years, ten years? Look, let's try and respect our own. Let's honor our own. Let's respect our own. Manchester United, they have a lot of pundits, a lot of pundits from Manchester United, Gary, Gary Neville and Co., they talk trash for how many years now? How many Chelsea ex-footballers are doing what Mikel is doing? We need to help our own. We need to support our own. Let him speak out. If my voice cannot be heard here and his voice can be heard, let him speak out. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Listen, he says something. I'm sorry. He says something about Obi Mikel. Obi Mikel, he says something about Rhys James, our captain. And many people are on his neck for, what, for making that statement. To the extent that I even saw a statement that someone says that he's been a racist. In what sense? Is Conor Gallagher not a British? Is Conor not a British player? Why would somebody say because John is... Uh, not speaking for, how do you call it, Rhys James, so he's, he's been a racist. Now, listen to what he said. Rhys James, he said, Rhys James, I love him as a football player and as a person. And I think he should be captain of Chelsea. But you can't be the captain of this football club and constantly get injured. That is just it. It is the truth. It is the truth. We all will love Rhys James. But you can't be a captain and constantly be injured. By the way, it is not Rhys James' fault. He is not faking the injury. So no one should get me wrong. But the fact is that because he's injury prone, and we knew it's not now, we shouldn't have even given him the armband. Our captain needs to be consistent because he's the leader on the pitch. He's the commander on the pitch. When it comes to a pitch, the coach is already at the, at the edge, at the bench. It is the players that are on the pitch, the leader on the pitch that leads the troop to fight for the badge. 
I'm not surprised we are not winning games. Because if our commander is not on the pitch, what do you expect the sergeant and the corporals to do? When a general himself is always, almost half of the season is gone. How many times did James perform? He said, we had one of the best captains any football club will ever have in John Terry. He was always there. I remember him breaking his toe and he trained and played with it. This is something that will governize the team if your captain is always there. And it is true. It is 100% true. Listen, it is for no reason we are seeing the, the ability, the capability, and, and the strength of, of Conor Gallagher. It is for no reason. You know, you know one of the reasons why? Because he has the armband. So more eyes are on him. And he is delivering consistently. In this season, like Mika always said, he is, if not, the only player that is really fighting for the badge, Conor Gallagher. And he wears the armband. He's the one fighting for the badge, and he wears the armband. Mikel Obi is not making any mistake. He's not speaking, he's not saying that Rizim is a good player. No. He admitted that this is a guy that he loves. He likes to watch him play, but he cannot be a captain of Chelsea when you are constantly injured. It's as simple as that, dear friend. Nobody should get him wrong. No one should get him wrong. A plea to Chelsea owners from Joko on Conor Gallagher. Joko was one of our own and he sent a plea message to Chelsea owners. Listen to it. He said, it will be a travesty if Chelsea let him go. It, it will be a travesty if Chelsea sells Conor Gallagher. You hear him link with Tottenham. Please don't. If I could speak to the owners now, just don't do that. Just don't sell Conor Gallagher. Then Obi Mikel now commented. He said, Connor is one guy I can single out that is fighting for the badge. Apart from Connor, there is nobody else. Now, our main captain is injured. Ben Chiwe was injured. He's just coming back. We don't know how long he's going to be staying. The, our only fit captain that we have, entry captain that is fit, they want to sell him. So why would ex-players speak against that decision? And someone will come and comment. I understand. People can just say anything. I, I, someone, one of my brothers also came on my channel and talked about me giving the fake news. Let me say something here, please. With all due respect. In football matters or reporting on football news, there are no certainties. There are no certainties. And when, what I mean by saying there are no certainties is that there is nothing 100%. You can report on a player that is being sold to Chelsea today. Overnight, that decision could be changed. Does that make you a fake new news reporter? No. Because these are men that are making the decisions day in, day out, every day. Chelsea can scout a player. Directors can decide, okay, we want to get, get him. The coach can say no. But meanwhile, it's already in the news. And three... Two, three, four journalists, I mean senior journalists that are ahead of some of us, they will confirm it. They will, will, before we come out with something, anytime we research, before I come here and deliver anything, we do our research, it's always been confirmed by two or three. Maybe Fabrizio Romano, David Einstein, before I will come, I must always check. But it is true that sometimes we can make errors, we can make mistakes. We can. Because maybe, maybe Fabrizio Romano got it wrong. Maybe David Oystein got it wrong. But that does not make us fake news channel. Please. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I need to explain these things. Because sometimes it hurts when somebody comes to say you are, you are, you are fake or you are, you are reporting fake news. The past few days, it is true that Todd Bole was in Naples to meet with the Napoli president. It is also true that Victor Osimhen is in AFCON, playing AFCON football. So they made it a point that they will not make any news about it, or whatever that is happening. You remember before they signed Romeo Lavia? Is it Romeo Lavia? No. Um, Casado. The deal went through, but they refused to announce it because 
there was a Chelsea against Brighton game that weekend. Do you remember? And the club decided to respect Brighton. The club decided to respect... No. There was a game against Liverpool. Liverpool, yes. There was a game against Liverpool. And because Liverpool wanted the same player... So Chelsea decided to hold on with the news until after the game with Liverpool before it was announced. If you can remember, that is how it is. So assuming they announced or they said something came up right now after then about Chelsea, about Napo Napoli and Victor Osimhen. What Victor Osimhen is playing in Afcon, and Napoli now is now trying to work out the deal is not going to be this season. Like we all know, there's Victor Osimhen is not coming to Chelsea this January. But in summer, yes, summer we all hope. Even that there is nothing 100%, I keep saying every time. So they could not announce it. They could not say anything about it. They are mute on it because the player is in AFCON. They don't want to distract him. They don't want to distract Victor Osimhen. They, he needs to be focused on a national assignment right now. I reported on, on uh, Karim, Karim Benzema. Right? I never said Chelsea was going to sign him. I, it was a question mark. Chelsea fans, would you like to see Karim Benzema in Chelsea on loan for the next five months? Which even today, there is still a news about it. And I'll bring that for you in the next episode, dear friend. Let me leave you here. I shall be back. See you when you see me, dear friend. Shalom and peace. <laughs>